Hey, what's happening, family? It's your man, Mark Black. I know it's been a while, but in light of the fact that we're running towards the end of the, the year and I want to start hitting it hard at the beginning of the new year, I'm basically not going to be broadcasting like I have been. Uh, I will be uploading videos. By the way, fam, make sure to, to say what's up to me because I'm going to be live in the chat when this video premieres. I miss you all and I want to get a chance to chop it up with you. Maybe we can talk about some of the stuff that I'll bring up during this broadcast, um, this video recording, basically. Um, this video recording, I'm titling Reflections and Deceptions, because um, 2020 has been a whole goddamn movie, and there's a lot to reflect upon and a lot that people have been deceived on, right? Um, so, you know, first of all, before I even get into it, as per usual, I want to shout out all of my supporting members of the channel. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your love. But even if you're not a financial supporter, I just appreciate those who click the video, who hit the thumbs, whether to like it or hate a button. And most importantly, who share this with their family and friends. There's nothing that I say or do that you're not a part of. Right. That you don't have a hand in making sure operates the way it operates. So I appreciate all of your efforts in advance to further my message, to further uh, my work. Um, it's definitely appreciate it. Make sure to check the description if you want to contribute um, either via cash app or uh, PayPal, whatever. I understand it's the holidays. If you can call it, call it. If not, don't stress it out. All right, but reflections and deceptions, right? Because we need to talk, number one, about the big elephant in the room. The big elephant in the room, of course, is SARS-CoV-2, right? SARS coronavirus 2. Um, that also causes COVID-19 disease. COVID-19 exposed everybody, fam. I don't know if I can even stress enough what we have seen with the advent of the era of the Rona, right? This year, we truly found out who's really our truths and who ain't. You know, who's the people that we can count on no matter what? And who's the people that need to be just thrown in the trash heap, right? We found out in a really visceral, sometimes painful way, who's who and what's what. Situations that you thought were rock solid, stable, that you could depend on, turned out to be jokes. People that you thought you loved and you cared for, you ended up leaving. Like more relationships ended during the era of the Rona than probably in the years previous. Because people are having to stay at home with motherfuckers they don't even like. You dig? So there's that. We also saw with the passing of the CARES Act in Congress, the largest transfer of wealth upwards in American history. Basically, we saw rich white America rob openly everybody. I'm not talking about just Negroes this time. Everybody got niggified this year in 2020. This country got turned into the United States of niggerdom, right, with Imperator Trump, first of his name, leading the charge. He turned the whole nation into niggas. Everybody got booked. Everybody got robbed. <laughs> Everybody. $5.3 trillion and counting. If you didn't understand that, understand that. The Fed is still loaning money to businesses, banks, etc. So it's $5.3 trillion and counting of your money just go creating what people are now coming to call a k-shaped economy the rich is going this way the rest of us going this way right and it was open it was done out in the open they they didn't even bother to hide it fam i mean you want to talk about some crazy shit they literally robbed everybody in broad daylight. It was like the equivalent of running up in a motherfucking bank with no mask on and a big ass strap talking about opening the drawer and breaking, you know, running out of there with everybody breathing. Yep, that shit happened. COVID exposed it all. 
They wouldn't have been able to get away with something like that, except in an era of a great emergence, right? An era of a time where there's great struggle, great fear, great concerns. They wouldn't have been able to get away with that shit. But they did it. And we all watched it happen. Another thing to reflect on, fam, another thing that has become patently obvious to those who are who are mindful is that what passes for politics in this country is an absolute goddamn joke. And the joke's on us, not on the politicians. It is a complete and utter shit show, a complete and utter travesty. You can call it many things. Politics, you can't. Politics would actually imply that there was some choice in the matter or some say that you had. Nope. This is many things, but politics it isn't. I mean, fam, look, Biden versus Trump wasn't even a choice. That was a non-choice, right? You were never going to, unless you were the most rabid, diehard, non-thinking sheep, partisan of either one of these fools, neither one of them you were voting for. You were voting against the other one. That's not really a choice. Like Joe Biden, Jim Crow Joe Biden versus Trader Trump. That's not a fucking choice. But under the two party duopoly, which some people would have you think that we should still be trying to court in some way, shape or fashion. Those are the choices they're going to offer you. Joe Biden said in his little speech that African-Americans had his back. And so he's going to have ours, whatever the fuck that means. Yet, strangely, we never hear anything about the pursuance of justice for the descendants of the enslaved here in the United States. We don't hear anything regarding movement on our justice claim. No, what we get is Jim Crow Joe Biden, the walking, living, breathing platitude machine. And Kamala, I'm not doing something specifically to benefit black people. No, Harris. Great job. Great job. If you voted for Democrats up or down ballot, fuck you. I, I, I mean, I don't mean that I hate you. I need you to understand that. I'm not going to sit here and be like, y'all are pieces of shit. I know you thought you were making the best decision possible, but I think at some point it's all right for you to know when to cut bait, when to say, yeah, this continuing to vote for Democrat shit just isn't working. Now, mind you, I'm not talking about voting for Republicans because I get sick and tired every time I say anything about Democrats, I automatically have to be told that I'm a Republican. I'm not. I'm an anarchist. I don't have a horse in the race. You motherfuckers seem to think that we need a government. I don't. But with that having been said, isn't it become clear to many of you that no matter how much you invest in the so-called big tent of the Democratic Party, that they simply just don't care about you at all? Like, they're both wholly owned subsidiaries of Wall Street, the oligarchs, the Plutarchs, the kleptocrats, the corporations, right? Both the Democrats and the Republicans are bought and sold. They serve their constituency and you and I are not it. Like how hard is that to figure out? Why is it that we still continually see our people who are supposedly becoming more politically savvy still continuing to vote in the 80s and 90 percent For these sorry ass Democratic candidates that make it clear all the way. It'd be one thing if they promised to something and then reneged. Okay, like I could get it if Jim Crow Joe Biden said, I'm about to go into office and I'm making a day one priority, the greatest sweep of changes specifically for black people that this country has ever seen due to their long and ongoing and loyal support of the Democratic Party. And he was somehow able to get Kamala to say the same fucking thing. So they're both on the same sheet of music. 
but then they got in the office and they stopped talking about us. At least then I could understand the mass voting for Democrat candidates, for Democratic candidates. I could understand it then. Hey, they promised us change, real fucking change. They said they were going to do this. They said we're going to do that. Now it turns out they're not. Okay, that I can respect. Anybody can get bopped. But many of you motherfuckers are not even getting bopped. They're openly telling you they're not going to give you anything. The people that you follow politically, that you look to as political leaders and representation are telling white Democrats and white America, well, us niggas don't want nothing. We just glad to help y'all get power, massa. So they telling you openly they're not going to do shit for you and you still vote for them, even down ballot? Makes no fucking sense. There's too many black folk, fam, that have faith that politics alone will determine our ultimate fate here in America. Will politics play a role? Yes, just like in all things. And don't worry, we're actually going to talk more in the new year about politics. But we're going to talk about it in a way we haven't talked about it before. I promise you that. I hope to bring you something completely new. But there's too many of us to think that we just vote for the right person or back the right candidate or throw our weight behind a particular party. That, that That's going to help us out. That That's going to be ultimately the end goal, the end game. Many of us are part of organizations that do po- you know, political work or that aim to do political work. But a lot of their work is tied to party politics. And one other thing that we've seen this year that we need to reflect upon, fam, is that we need to reflect upon the fact that there's a lot of motherfucking people out there with strats that depend on party politics that have completely failed. They have delivered us nothing. Right? I'm not going to go in on particular strategies, but if you guys are paying attention, you know who's who and what's what. There's a lot of political strategies where there's no evidence whatsoever to demonstrate that those political strategies were anything other than window dressing. They were a feel good thing that the people that supported it, got behind it, participated in it, did it, were able to feel good about having done something. But the efficacy, the efficacy, I want you to hear me and what I'm saying because starting in the new year, We are going to be discussing efficacy because efficacy is something you can measure. Efficacy is something that you can measure. You can calculate the efficacy of a lot of these strats that depend on party politics, loyalty to the Democrats, loyalty to the Republicans, loyalty to this group or loyalty to that group have openly fucking failed. They are not and do not work for us. And one of the greatest deceptions that I've seen this year in 2020 is the idea that we can win with politics. Politics is helpful. It is an area of human activity that we need vastly more, this vastly more understanding and discussion on. But is it the savior of black folk? No. And I think that anybody that tries to make politics the sole arbiter of whether or not somebody is for the tribe or not, you really need to check yourself before you end up wrecking yourself because the same people that you shit on because they don't share your politics is the same people you're going to find yourself on, the, you know, cast out in the outer darkness with when politics runs rough shine over everybody. We are never the majority in this country. And no matter how much political acumen, how much political power we ultimately gain through education, through understanding, we will by necessity due to numbers in the structure of the political system always be at a disadvantage relative to every other political demo in this country. That's just a fact. And the sooner we come to grips with that, 
and all of the concomitant strategies that then arise politically from that understanding, the better off we'll be. Speaking of reflections and deceptions, fam, it looks like that 2053 is going to be more like 2023 for very, very many of us. What do I mean by that? For my angry black sheep, for those of you who watch regularly, you understand that um, there's been studies done that suggest that even if nothing changes specifically about our economic situation as a tribe, there was estimates that by 2053, the median black wealth, the value of the median black wealth of the United, you know, black people in the United States, right? The descendants of the enslaved in the United States would be zero, which of course, living in the so-called richest nation on the planet Earth means economic death. Being without any wealth means death in America. In America, you have the life you can purchase. Literally, you literally have the life that you can purchase. So without the means to purchase anything, life becomes really constricted and a hard series of choices for very, very many of us. But with COVID hitting the scene, right? A lot of people losing their jobs, losing their health care, losing their investments, losing their small one person employee business and so on and so forth. 2053 is looking more like 2023. And one of the great deceptions is, is that this downturn, this economic downturn, this recession, because I think nominally we're probably going into a depression, is going to be just like all the other ones, that somehow or another, black folk will find a way through. Now, I'm not saying that that's not the case, but I am saying, though, that it means a radical understanding and a change in how we do economics will be the only way we make it through this. This is not hyperbole. This is not me blowing smoke. This is not me fear mongering. This is me stating a simple fact that in the absence of money, if we don't learn how to do economics with each other in the absence of money, we're going to have a fucking problem because no one else will do life with us, especially if we ain't got no money. We're going to talk about that in the new year, too, as well. I've got some ideas around that, some ideas to help us understand truly what economics really should be with a proper understanding, you know, with a, um, an understanding from our tribal perspective. The last thing I'm going to say in this little brief video here, because I'm going to come back again with others. I'm just not going to be broadcasting again until the first of the year. I'm going to update everything. It's going to be a fresh look, kind of a, di a different style, a different format, but it's going to look dope. Um, the last thing that I want to reflect upon is that if we don't change our minds to the point where our minds start moving our asses, we're pretty much fucked. Let me explain. There's a whole lot of folk out here talking, myself included. So trust me when I tell you, I'm including myself in, in this group that I'm about to talk about. Many of us have some great ideas. If nothing else, we're good for amazing conversation and great discussion. And all of this is well. It is well with my soul that there are people out here that can speak clearly and with erudition about our specific issues, our specific trials, our specific solutions. Because contrary to popular belief, there are quite a few many solutions to our manifold problems under racism, white supremacy. The problem isn't that there are no solutions. The problem is, is there is no commitment to doing something 
with those solutions. I have found to my undying sorrow. This is your brother just being honest with you today. I found to my undying sorrow that you have black people right where you want them. As long as you're talking. As long as we're going on about different topics, everything from education, entertainment, economics, the law, labor, politics, religion, sex, war, all the areas of human activity. Black folk can talk about that shit till the cows come home. Until you ask them to put up or shut up. Until you ask certain black folk to execute and develop something that is tangible, that can be measured, either found wanting or found to be successful. Right? The moment you say, we need asses, we need money, we need effort. You lose about 90% of Negroes. In earlier times when white supremacy wasn't so inclined to press the issue, we could get away with that. We could get away with, ah, oh, you know, these niggas is just grifting and, you know, and people just always trying to get off in the nigga pockets like we got so much, right? And the whole nine yards. We could get away with that type of verbiage, with that type of talk. But if you don't invest in me, that's fine. I'm never going to ask you to put your efforts, time, money, investments into me personally. But I am going to ask at the end of this journey that we're about to take at the start of the new year, that you consider making a commitment to doing something collectively for yourself as well as for your people. I'm here to tell you, fam, that... There's a whole series of content that's coming, like I said, the start of the new year that's going to discuss real solutions, real solutions, not the solution, right? I'm not arrogant enough to believe I have the answers to any or all of this shit, but some real solutions that if we were to put some effort, put some commitment to doing behind those ideas, we could actually accomplish something to show our people what can be done as opposed to telling Negroes what can be done. If and when that project is finished, if at that point I don't have anybody willing to step up, I'm going to be done broadcasting probably by the mid mid next year. That's These next few videos, these next few broadcasts where I go in depth I'm leaving it all on the table in every area of human activity from economics all the way to war slash counter war, right? I'm going to leave it all on the table. Everything I know, I'm going to squeeze my brain like an orange and everything that I know you will know and every solution I've came up with, I'm going to offer freely. Then I'm going to issue a come to Jesus moment. An altar call, if you will. I'm going to say, now who's willing to get together with me to do these things? If there's no interest, I got other shit I can do. And I, I'm not saying that I hate you. I'm not saying that I don't want to see us succeed. I'm not saying I'm giving up on my people or any of that. But you have to know when to fish and when to cut bait. My job isn't to carry the horse to the water and throw him in it. It's just to walk over to the water hole and point at it. You know, fan the, the smell of the water they weigh. Hopefully they'll be like, oh, thirsty. Could use some of that water, right? That's my job. That's what I've always wanted to do. And believe it or not, even if I stop broadcasting about this, I'm still going to be talking. I'll, I'll be doing another, another podcast or something like that, talking about the stuff that I really like talking about, like science, psychology, philosophy, you know, shit like that. But... No, this is going to be my legacy. Come what may. So, fam, starting the new year. And again, I'm going to come to you again before the end of the new year, but or before the end of this year. But starting the beginning of the new year, I'm going to lay it all out. And then we're going to have an opportunity to gather together in real life. 
Not on this fucking application called YouTube or on Twitter. But we're going to have an opportunity to come together in real life and put these things into practice. We fail, we fail. We succeed, we succeed. But we are going to do something. No more talk. The end of Black Outcast Media Broadcasting as we know it is coming. Will it end with a bang? Will we actually take off and do a real project? Regardless of how many other Negroes or how many other white folks approve of it or whatever. Or will it end with a whimper? With just a page with no videos being uploaded and just archived videos from old broadcasts? The answer to that question is not up to me. The, quest, the answer to that question is up to you. It will end. All things come to an end. How will it end? Your call. So fam, I love you. I hope you guys had a safe holiday. Um, for those of you who rolled the Rona dice on Thursday, on Thanksgiving, understand some of you will have crapped out come Christmas. And I mourn in advance for you. Fam, be safe out there. Wear your mask when you can't socially distance. Socially distance where you're able. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Don't go anywhere you don't have to go. Be around your immediate family. Love can wait. Right? You love your family members, wait for them. The end of the Rona, or at least the other side of the shit is coming. Be patient. Continue to hold out. And until the next time I see you, fam, as always, I want to wish you all love, peace, prosperity, and power, real power to our people.